Hi guys, so this is um, the rope stream one. There's two rope streams. And um, I'm not gonna give you a word for word on the stream because it was super duper long. I'm just gonna like try to summarize it even though it's still gonna be long. But um, there's a mandatory, you should stop this video and you should go and find The Greatest Showman, rewrite the stars official video scene. You could turn the sound off if you want, it doesn't matter. Um, in this dream, there were a lot of rope scenes and it had a lot to do with timing, okay? So that's the best, um, the, the best video I can find that would allow you to see kind of what I saw. So basically in The Greatest Showman, the girl or the guy will pull on a rope and there's a weight at the other end and exactly when and how hard that pull is that determines how high they go, how fast they go, all of that. And um, that's going to be really essential to understanding this dream. And just pay attention only to the ropes, the hands, the pulleys, that kind of stuff. Okay. I don't care about the people that are supposed to be in love or whatever. That doesn't matter. Okay. So pause and come back. Hopefully you watched the Rewrite the Stars Greatest Showman Ropes video. I need to also give you some base information for this dream before I tell it. So it's a lot easier to understand an interpretation because there's a lot going on. So there's certain characters in this dream. You might want to just take note. There's Grace, which is a close friend of mine. I changed her name for privacy. She used to be a very strong Christian. Then she went through a strong rebellion then um, she started to come back in full measure to Christ, but she was slowed down by kids and her job working with dogs. And the Lord has assured me that she will make it to heaven and not be left behind. But she's just kind of in that, like getting her life back together stage. Okay. Then we've got the master of escape that I will see. And that is Jesus. Then there are the robbers and that, those are demons. Then there's me and other learners. These This represents the Christians that fight the spiritual war, like the other learners, and then I'm myself. Um, the man in charge of the pulley and rope systems, I call him the tape need man or the taped man. Um, that represents the Holy Spirit. Um, then there's locations, which we need to be aware of, and then I'm gonna get into the dream. So there's a small house with ruined floors that is grace's house and that's just the foundation of her house or her spiritual foundation is um little rocky okay then we've got the small house in completion it's going to be finished and done and painted differently and everything that's the same christian i know after she fully submits to christ and gets to heaven this will be how her house or her foundation her spiritual life is okay her spiritual home they're both representing the spiritual home then we've got the cement house, with, which is like a warehouse. And that actually represents the modern church. And then the house I grew up in, that's the, so the house is the training ground. We come back later and help because of the training we did, okay? Now, I know that these are 100% accurate because after this dream was done, I had a dream with the entire interpretation, <laughs> which I've never gotten. And I was like, this is so much easier. <laughs> so this is the Holy Spirit's interpretation of this dream. It's like amazing. So here we go. First scene, a close friend of mine named Grace was having her floors redone and she had a small white 1940s downtown charming classic home, kind of a shotgun style home. Um, it looked good on the outside, but she was not allowed to move in until the floors were dry. The antique floors were painted with white paint in the center of the family room, her problem area. And then it was covered with strips of food grade plastic wrap over it as a protectant until it was dry. I went in before Grace so I could get there to check on the drying process and I was shocked to find that in front of the painted area that tiny baby footprints had been walked on top of the plastic displacing the paint. So there were little oak footprints on white you know, painted area. And then I also saw um, that there were dog prints made in a similar way. 
Then curiously behind this, there was a huge collection of puffy marshmallowy paint that had exploded out of the plastic wrap and now it was two feet high like suds out of control. I looked into how to make puffy paint to see like what they would put in there and it's basically glue and self-rising flour. So that's gonna represent sin or leaven. The self-rising is the leaven. Um, as I was about to leave, two robbers dressed in all black with black sock masks on came running out of the room behind the family room and they went tearing out of the house. I decided I had better go run and chase them. So I chased them out the door and into the next building that they went into. Um, it was a curious house that later felt more like a warehouse. Um, it was all cement everywhere you looked. It was hyper modern and the few wind, there were very few windows to let in any light. The robbers were very quick. And although I tried to chase them, I could not catch them. Although I could see glimpses of them. Then all of a sudden I noticed that the robbers were chasing a man and he was like a master of escape. I was mesmerized by watching his skills. The robbers would run up to him and think that he had him trapped in a corner, for instance. And then without any warning, the master of escape would yank on a rope and he would just go flying up like two stories out of the reach of the robbers. They would run upstairs and try to trap him up there. And then suddenly another rope would appear and he would twist his arm around it and pull it in a different direction. And he would seem to slide across the floor like lightning fast. The master of escape had various techniques and different pressures and twists that he would manage and the appearing of ropes. And with each one, not only did he disappear far away from the robbers, but he also would leave them in a stunned, disoriented state, making them useless for a few minutes. The master of escape ran out of the concrete home and ran right into my childhood home. Now this home was a unique Spanish revival style home built in 1928, and it had many highly specific built-in features. This home was easily able to be used to trick people with hidden doors, um, hidden communication systems, um, hidden practical built-ins like a shoe shine, you know, prop and seats that would slide into walls. I mean, it was just kind of like a cool place to live and grow up, right? Well, anyway, we're at this place and um, the entryway where the family room would meet up with the entryway is where the majority of this this dream took place. And um, there's a grand curved um, staircase with arched openings to this huge gigantic family room that used to have an entire sports teams or Bible studies in there. I mean, like it's big, okay? So as I followed this chase into my own childhood home, I noticed that the master of escape was skillfully using the ropes and pulleys here too in my house. And the most prominent, he went straight up the wall from the bottom of the stairs as if to disappear into thin air um, up to the second floor. And then one time he was like only four inches off the floor and he went from the right side of the room and he would appeared to be zinging across the floor even and hovering off of it by the couple of inches. All of this was occurring in the dark of night, which made it all the more difficult for the thieves to see. The master kept using the prominent ropes, but he would use them in different ways, some to tumble down, some to be slow, some to move quick, some were done with a twist or a yank. Some had a very smooth technique. I found myself in awe of this master of escape artist and I had this internal drive to want to know how to use the ropes and the pulleys. Finally, the sun came up and the thieves were gone and we were all in my childhood home. Suddenly I was surrounded by a small group of people and we all had the same question. How could the master of escape artist have had this kind of control over the ropes and befuddled those thieves so badly? Well, yes, we were all there for rope lessons. There was a man with a baggy work pants, like a farmer's wear, like those Carhartt pants. And he had special silver bubble wrap taped around his knees. We knew him only as tape man, but he was in charge of the pulley and rope systems. Um, he was there to set each of us up with our own personal rope lines and teach us how to use them. Everyone had the typical just off the floor or vertical system to learn upon. That was how you started, but not me. I was only given one pulley set, 
but it was much harder to use and it was in a very unusual placement. It was waist high and it only went horizontal. One of the old other trainees who was young and she had dark hair and she was highly critical of me. Um, and she told Tape Man that I was too old. There was no way I was going to be able to master this odd pulley system in the middle of the wall. She made a very big deal that someone with gray hair was just too old to um, do these pulleys at all, let alone the strange mid-wall one. And as she said it, it just seemed like this mid-wall was going to be more difficult than it probably was. She was very proud that she had the same type of pulley system that the master escape artist had, and she was sure that any divergence from that was simply wrong. Well, Tape Man quickly and firmly chastised the young girl for having this type of thinking. He explained that I was going to be the one to do the most damage to the thieves because they would never expect anyone to have a mid-wall escape rope. And he assured her that this would discombobulate them. He also said that although I was not strong enough that day, that it took less than 12 weeks to get good at the ropes and to earn the certificate of mastery. And then he knew that I had more will power than any of the other trainees and that no one else could get fit um, in time for the strength that it was going to take for the mid wall ropes. I, it was indeed more difficult and it took more skill and more practice. Also, he said my age and my gray hair were to my advantage because the thieves would think and be incorrect in assuming that I was slow, narrow in thinking and not a threat at all. Tape man had to measure each of us and mount the wooden pulleys. At what point to mount the sand weight and he had to train all of us into techniques as to when to yank, when to twist, when to loop. This was going to take hours and hours of practice to perfect. Each system um, that was for us specifically had to be modified for us, our weight, our height, everything. At this point, the tape man would mount the rope and slide along the rope with his silver cushion wrapped knees and make adjustments on our lines. He was very skilled at making our rope systems perfect. In the process of learning, we were surprised to know that only we that were being trained could see the ropes. They were invisible to the thieves, so they thought we were simply in doing entertainment tricks and we were just defying logic and stupefying them. One problem is that we had very little time to practice before nightfall when the thieves would be back and the house kept having visitors. They were touring the place and it was against the rules to practice when the house had any visitors. It was very difficult. So the third scene. Finally, we were ready and I went to find my friend Grace to talk to her about her floors before she started dragging all of her goods back to the house. I went to tell her and she was really bummed. Then, as um, I was speaking to her, I saw a vision inside of the dream of her home completed and it had a fresh coat of shiny paint and the house had extra trims on it, like the house looked slightly larger than before. And we walked inside and her floors were amazing. They were perfectly finished, but all of the home was now in pastels, not whites. And it was very soft and pretty and it felt very fancy, but it was relaxed. The home was also beautifully furnished. And in this part of the vision, when we were visiting my puppy Remy, who was in the rescue dream, was also there running about and not one puppy print could be seen. So the next scene of the dream. Um, at this point, I was awakened, but then I went right back to sleep and I learned more. I was told the pulley systems are unfinished and it's to save more people. We need to tend to learning and perfecting our skills versus Team S right now while we are still on this earth. While they are still hot after us so that when we do the rope skills and buckle up because it goes quick and we will need those rope skills when we come back. I was given an addendum to the dream. I was shown a very tall outdoor theater with an amphitheater around it. 
the roof of the theater was stainless steel and it was um, kind of curved and there were theater lights that were pointing down. There was a single bucket handing, hanging off of a rope that was laced through a pulley system that was toward the back of the stage. And I was told this, this is a, about lifting up to Christ in rope buckets. So meaning going home safely, but we need practice with the horizontal and the vertical rope trick lines with the enemy here on earth. We need those skills to improve now while we wait because we will be using more complex skills after the practice house. When the robbers are roaming around, we will need higher skills. We have to be stealth and use good timing um, when and how we practice. The horizontal ropes are about slipping away in situations out of Team S's hand by using God's methods, which are effective prayer, effective use of scripture, effective calling upon the name of Jesus and using it at them. Also, I heard the rope man is mastering a new concept of two people per rope, which is much more complex. This means that when two or more pray for each other's spiritual battles or work as a team and fight the spiritual battle together, it is much more effective and much more difficult on the enemy. They are very confused. 12 weeks and then, I, then I heard this, 12 weeks and then 10 days of persecution, 12 weeks or less until the worldwide rapture. And then we anointed go before with excellent timing. At this point, I awakened to my husband's clock radio and um, then it was playing, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, just like the ones I used to know. And then it promptly shut off and he didn't even touch it. It was just like, here's the song you need to know. Now my mother played that exact version um, in our childhood home every single year. And our Christmases were like huge social events. They weren't like, you know, family five or family four or six or whatever. It was a huge social event and it was like all week was busy and lots of people came and we saw people we didn't see, you know, all the time. And it was really super fun. And to me, it was always about seeing everybody and listening to all the conversations and talking to everybody. Um, it wasn't really about the gifts, you know, really. It was just about like seeing family because even though they, a lot of them were our friends, we called them family. Okay, so then I went back to sleep. And the next time I awakened is when I was told to study the interactions between Jesus and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and what their threats were to him and what his responses were back to them. And then I was told this is representative of demons attacking us and how we should respond. So I have an entire packet that you could print out, look at, and it's all about Jesus' words and his responses, okay? Um, I was also told this, weights and ropes. The precision is based on lots of experience, muscle memory, it's a feel, an exact yank is a distance or a quickness or a stability or a timing or grips or tricks. Our mastery over scripture prayer and calling out to Jesus. This, this must be precise because this is a war. And then I was told we are in the final earth training. Now these skills will be refined on Gaboa for the anointed. We will come back with perfected skills to fight and save. Okay. So here are a couple of verses that go with the rope dream. Um, Psalm 119, 61, I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. The cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight, I rise to give you thanks to you because of your righteous judgment. Um, and this is regarding the demons, okay? So Psalm 124, 2 and 4. Many a time they have afflicted me from my youth, yet... They have not prevailed against me. The Lord is righteous. He has cut in pieces the cords of the wicked. I love this dream. I thought this was the coolest dream. And I would never have gotten all the interpretation without the Holy Spirit, like literally handing it to me. Love this dream. There's another one called Ropes 2. It's also very cool. And, um, you know, 
dial in for that. <laughs> See you next time.